Welcome, Jocelyn Center uh, Facebook Live fans. This is Jack Newby. I'm the executive director at the Jocelyn Center. This is our Friday interview show. In a few minutes, we'll be talking with Melissa Daniels and Augustine Nariola from Lift to Rise about rental programs and rental assistance that are available and could be available to um, our viewers and to seniors in the community. Um, before we get to that, we're finishing our first month of being open after this um, horrible pandemic we've been through. Um, I want to remind you all that when you come in for live, pro live programming here on site, we're still asking that you uh, continue to wear your masks. We'll ask you to sign in and take your temperature. Um, and that's just to ensure your safety. Uh, as we all beginning to hear, there are some variants of this COVID virus out in the community, um, and we want to protect everyone as much as we can. Uh, we'll be continually watching what the uh, medical information is, and hopefully we'll be able to move to uh, full class schedules uh, in the next month or so. So just keep keep updated, but when you do come on site, we ask you to wear your mask and to while inside and um, sign in. So uh, for your protection. And as we move forward, we are adding more classes and activities. We have our Go For Life exercise class Monday through Thursday at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and that's a great class to get you uh, into exercising again. And that's one thing to be careful about. We've all been, uh, kind of have less active over the last uh, year and a half or so. So if you're getting back into your activity, just be careful that you take it slowly um, and especially in this heat, um, but we've lost our muscle weight. We've lost some uh, endurance. So let's start slowly and we've got the classes for you. Um, also, we started our card games and table games. So uh, Pinochle and Canasta um, are back, back with us. Um, balanced conditioning is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Um, also on Tuesday, July 6th, we have personal protection for seniors. That's here on site, 10.30 to 11.30 uh, to teach you some ways to protect yourself. Um, and also we have our mindful meditation um, Tuesdays and Thursday, July 6th and uh, or excuse me, Tuesdays, July 6th and July 20th. Um, and our Popular matinee movies are back, uh, and for Wednesday, July 7th, uh, we're doing Wonder Woman. So there you go. Um, lots happening here at the Jocelyn Center. Again, we're starting out slowly. We're observing uh, physical distancing to keep people safe, um, and just bear with us and watch the news and take care of yourself when you're out there in the community. Um, this is our Friday interview show, so we're happy to have with us today Melissa Daniels and Augustine Areola from Lift to Rise, um, and they're going to be talking with us about their rental program. How are you? <laughs> um, how are you, Melissa? Hi, doing well, Jack. Thank you so much for having us on today. And Augustine, um, good to see you. Likewise, thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, so tell us a little bit first, Melissa. Um, about Lift to Rise and, and what you do and how long you've been in the community. Sure, absolutely. So Lift to Rise is a nonprofit collective impact organization here in the Coachella Valley. We've been around for about three years officially. This week is actually our third birthday. So lots of celebrating and reflecting going on. Happy um, birthday. Our, <laughs> thank you. Um, our mission is to end poverty and solve the underlying causes of poverty here in the Coachella Valley. We know that there's many residents, full-time residents here who struggle with the cost of living. So our two main focuses are housing affordability and economic opportunity. Augustine, did I forget anything? Nope, you definitely said it better than I could have. Well, you know, that's great. And one thing that, that I found out in my research is we see the federal poverty level, which is the same across the country, um, yet in different areas, um, poverty level is, is quite different. And here in Riverside County, you know, we look at for seniors, um, you know, what the actual cost of living. And I think there are some uh, uh, websites through uh, UCLA, the um, Elder Living Index, um, and that's actually around two and a half times what poverty level is. Um, so it's, it's really 
Um, we know, especially for seniors here in the community who have retired many years ago, they thought they did all the right things. They had their money saved and all of that. Um, you know, their social security benefits and other benefits aren't even meeting that, that income level. So very important programs you're doing. Um, we're here to talk about the uh, rental assistance program. So, so tell me about that and some background. on. That's right. So the United Lift Rental Assistance Program began in the summer of 2020. This was a program that was created in partnership with our organization, Lift to Rise, Inland SoCal United Way, and the County of Riverside. What happened was when the federal government began passing all of those stimulus acts for emergency funding response to the coronavirus pandemic, was there was certain funds that counties could decide how to use to best support their communities. And the County of Riverside decided they wanted to begin a rental assistance fund to help keep people in their homes. So Lift to Rise, along with Inland SoCal United Way, began administering this program. There are federal guidelines that set the rental assistance application eligibility, so who can apply, who can get rental assistance, but our organization is responsible for processing applications for folks from Eastern Riverside County. Um, so yeah, it started in June 2020, and we used a pot of CARES Act funding initially to support those applications. Then there was some block grant funding we were using. And then this year, starting in March, we began using emergency rental assistance program funding from the second stimulus bill. Um, Augustine, anything you'd like to add? You've been here much longer than I and can talk about the inception of this program and, and how we got to where we are today. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, just to add on to what you mentioned, um, we're, we're now a year into the uh, administering of this program and the funding and, and helping folks um, remain housed and pay any of their past due rent as well as, as future rent. Um, but Jack, is there a specific way that you want us to go about discussing um, the specifics of the rental assistance? Because I can go on and on and on <laughs> about everything. Um, well, tell us a little helpful. bit. Um, now, as I understand it, you're the you're the program manager for this for this rental assistance? I am the person that helps oversee the day-to-day -day operations okay. um, and have support from our deputy director as well as um, other folks that help us making sure that we meet you know, the guidelines and that everything is always um, set in stone so that we can go ahead and move forward with. So what are the some, some of the guidelines that people need to know if they want to um, apply for this program? Yeah, so under the current funding source, there are three main guidelines that we have to follow. The first one is that anyone, a person, an individual within any household uh, was impacted directly or in financially impacted directly or indirectly due to the pandemic. And one of the ways that they can do that is by demonstrating that they received unemployment at any point after March 13, 2020 um, through now. It could be, even if they're not receiving it, right? That's one way that they can show they were impacted or that they um, had, in, they incurred significant costs due to the pandemic. Um, this can be childcare. Um, as a result of folks being um, having children doing um, distance learning. Um, this can be quarantine related costs, self-isolation costs. Um, so as long as you can demonstrate that the pandemic financially impacted you in one way or another, um, we can work and, and help you with assistance. And then the easiest way is demonstrating that you received unemployment. Um, the second component to the guideline is that you have to be income eligible. So um, families must be earning at or below 80% of the area median income. Obviously those levels are set by, by HUD. Uh, and the third component is that um, we demonstrate that you're at risk of homelessness or experiencing housing instability. And that can be demonstrated um, by a past due notice, um, any proof or evidence, you know, there, um, there's housing instability in your house. Uh, but those are the three main guidelines, right? So it's, you've been financially impacted, you're income eligible, and then you can demonstrate um, housing that you're at risk of homelessness or that you're um, in housing instability. And as I understand it, this covers both past due rent and future rental assistance? Yeah, so um, folks are eligible to receive up to 12 months of past due rent plus an additional three months of future rent. Um, so if you apply, let's say if you, let's say you were past due since March, uh, since March 13, 2020, up until now, um, you would be eligible to receive all, uh, you'd be able to get covered up until now. 
um, for, for rent. The total length of the assistance cannot exceed 15 months. Uh, but yes, at a core level, it's past due and then future 12 past due and three months of future rent. And how do people find out about this program, uh, find out more about this program to find out if they qualify and uh, get that information and then how do they apply? I can tell you about the, the qualifications. I think Melissa is a lot more equipped to talk about our outreach efforts and how we uh, make sure that the access to application is equitable. Uh, so I don't know if you wanna go ahead and talk about that Melissa and then I can go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, the application process. Thanks, Augustine. And first of all, Jack, I do want to just acknowledge how important it is that we work with other local organizations to get the word out. Um, programs like this are only as effective to the end that people can learn about them. So participating in outreach like this is one way that we hope to spread the word. Um, throughout this year, before it was getting too hot, we actually were doing a lot of pop-up applications uh, in person where we would go to a city hall or a library or a community center and have folks come and apply in person. But the main way that we recommend people find out is through our website, unitedlift.org. So that's United, like United States, and Lift, like Lift to Rise, .org. And this website has all of the FAQs that people will need to read through in order to know what documentation they need to apply. It also has the income eligibility that Augustine spoke to earlier. So folks can understand from the get go, okay, well, do I fall in this category or, or not to see if they're eligible. We also have um, a permanent place where people can apply in person from now through September. There are locations on either end of the valley where folks can apply. In Mecca, we are working with the Galilee Center where people can set up appointments to bring their documentation and apply in person. And on the west side of the valley, we're working with DAP Health in Palm Springs. So we can provide those numbers to you um, or I can read them now if you think folks are, are interested as we know that it's very easy um, for some people to apply in person compared to online. One of the things we found out during this pandemic is there are a lot of seniors and older adults who are not comfortable with uh, the internet and the technology. So yes, why don't you give us the numbers that they can call if they, if they can uh, to set up an appointment. Um, and when they call that, are they told the information they need to bring with them? Yes, yes. The folks um, are, are staffed to be application intake coordinators and they will be able to provide that information. Um, the appointment number for the Galilee Center on the East Valley is 760-396-9100. That's 760-396-9100. And for folks who want to set up an appointment to apply at DAP Health, they can call 760-656-8400. That's 760-656-8438. That's great. So, and also, why don't you give us the website again where people can look at for information or, or apply? Absolutely. It's unitedlift.org. Okay. I guess that doesn't help if it's reversed, huh? I'm in the mirror no, image of reversed. myself. But, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm looking at my screen. So it's unitedlift.org. Okay. So that's where folks can go to apply um, online or to just see the eligibility requirements. And if there's folks who are on Facebook right now uh, watching, they can also just tab on over to Lift to Rise. If you search for our organization, you'll see a little orange and yellow and pink icon, and that's us, Lift to Rise. And we're often posting on Facebook about eligibility requirements, new pop-ups, things that people should know if they're interested in applying. Um, one thing that we also like to emphasize for folks is you do not need to be a citizen to apply. This program is open to all residents of Riverside County who are renters. And another thing is that you can also apply for utility assistance. So if you're in a situation where maybe you don't need rental assistance, but you find that you're having trouble with your utility bills or you have past due utility bills, you can apply um, for assistance with that as well. Okay, well, this is, this is great information. And I, and I heard you earlier say um, that you were looking for 
potential community partners where you could do some pop-ups and, and especially in the summer, hopefully inside. Um, and how would, if there's a community partner such as a senior center or um, another organization that would like to find out more information about hosting one of these uh, places where people can sign up, how would they find out about that? Yeah, they can just contact us directly. You can contact me, you can contact our office. Um, my email is melissa at lifttorise.org. So it's M-E-L-I-S-S-A -S at lifttorise.org. And so if anyone's interested in hosting an event, they can email me and I'll link you up with our outreach coordinator um, and our community engagement manager who is able to coordinate those events. Um, we had a lot of success, roughly one in 10 people who've applied this spring have applied in person. Um, and that's something we hope to keep going, knowing what we know about the digital divide. Okay. And Augustine, anything we've missed about the program that you want to add? Yeah, I think I, I just want to go ahead and add that um, even if you're not passed through on rent right now, you're still eligible to apply. So if at any point, you know, I know folks, a lot of folks, their incentive is to go ahead and pay rent because they'll go ahead and pay rent before they pay anything else because they want to make sure they remain housed. Um, and so we've encountered situations where folks have taken out, um, you know, loans or asked friends for loans to, to go ahead and pay for rent um, and have fallen behind on other places. And while we can't cover those expenses, what we can do is help alleviate kind of that pressure um, by covering three months of future rent. So even if you're not past due, we still strongly encourage you to, to go ahead and apply um, to the rental assistance program because you could be eligible to receive up to three months of uh, future uh, future rent. Well, and that's one of the issues we find with, with seniors. A lot of times they'll pay their rent, but they won't buy food or they'll you know not buy healthy food. So um, then that may, would that be one of the ways that they could show how the, uh, show their eligibility, their, how their, they had to juggle their finances to make sure they keep a roof over their head? Yeah, so again, I, I think it's good for me to mention this, that like, if anybody in the household has experienced a financial hardship due directly or indirectly to the COVID-19 pandemic, that can mean you qualified for unemployment benefits or had a reduction in household income incurred significant costs or experience other financial hardships, there's a lot that we can work to help with that. And, and I think the example you just mentioned is a good way to say like, you know what, you know, as a result of this, I've had to spend more on food because I, I can't go out or there's there's things that we can go in and work. Uh, obviously we have to look at each application individually and how that household has been impacted. Um, but we know by this point, virtually everyone has been impacted in one way or another through the pandemic because of the pandemic. Well, I wanna yes. thank you. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to add that another thing that could be in those costs is health costs. So if anyone, um, you know, had significant health costs because of the pandemic, because of coronavirus, that would fall into the, uh, the bucket of things that we could look at as additional coronavirus related expenses. Okay, and why don't you give those numbers again to call for uh, people that want to make the in person appointments. Absolutely. Um, if you're interested in making an appointment in Palm Springs, you can call 760-656-8438. That's 760-656-8438. And if you're interested in applying in Mecca, you can call 760-396-9100. That's 760-396-9100. Well, Melissa, Augustine, I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning on our variety show and, and interview show. Um, I think some great information for the community, not only for seniors, but um, people out there in the community. So we will be sure and share this uh, far and wide and, and hopefully get the information out there. Um, for everyone else, we'll be back here uh, next Friday for the Joslyn Variety Show interview show. Um, just a reminder, we'll be closed on uh, Monday, July 5th for the, for the Independence Day holiday and wish you all a very happy holiday and a safe weekend. And thank you again, uh, Melissa and Augustine. Have a great week. Okay. <laughs>